I survived 100 days in Minecraft Bedrock with these goals. Make an enchantment table, craft full diamond armor, and defeat the ender dragon. If this video gets 1000 likes, I'll try 200 days. I started off by gathering wood and made stone tools. I then searched for wool for a bed as this would be crucial if I wanted to survive the 100 days as it would allow me to set my spawn point and skip the nights. While searching, I made sure to kill any animals such as chickens and pigs to make sure that I would have enough food to survive. I surprisingly found the ruined portal, so looted the chest, and that was pretty much all I had time for for day one. I continued searching for food and stumbled across a village, which had a bunch of wheat, carrots, and other crops. It also had a blacksmith with a blacksmith chest that contained two diamonds, an iron helmet, and an iron pickaxe. The third day was spent preparing to go mining, smelting charcoal for torches and food, gathering more wood to make sure I wouldn't run out when underground, and on my way back, I killed the iron golem in the village to be able to get some easy iron. However, I didn't realize my sword was going to break halfway through, so it took a long time to get this iron, but it was well worth it in the end. On previous attempts of surviving 100 days, I didn't make it to this point and had already rage quit after dying several times, so I was very excited to make it to day 4, and surely that means the world record speedrun of Minecraft will soon be mine, as I'm clearly the best player in the world. I decided to take over one of the villager houses as a temporary base and continue to smelt my food, I made a chest to be able to free up inventory space and store valuables. My sword breaking whilst killing the golem made me realise that if I wanted to survive, I'd have to make sacrifices. Instead of saving the diamonds for an enchanting table or diamond pick, I decided it was best to make a diamond sword to protect myself, using the two diamonds that I found earlier in the blacksmith chest. I then adventured underground into the darkness to search for my first bits of iron. Day 5 was literally just spent mining. On day 6 I was running out of supplies so decided to head back to the surface. I smelted the iron, got some wood, and made some iron pickaxes and a water bucket so I could clutch or use it to climb. I decided to plant saplings near the base to be able to get wood more efficiently without having to run backwards and forwards to the local forest. On day 7, I was mining away. Okay, you don't want to hear me sing, but you get the point. I started off day 8 with fresh new iron armor. I got bored of the look of stone, so I decided to go exploring and find sugarcane, as this will be used for an enchantment table and bookshelves later on. On day 9, I planted the sugarcane and began to make a wheat and carrot farm. On day 10, I went back to mining. Day 11, I was also mining, and can you guess what I did on day 12? Say it with me. I went mining. I eventually found a mineshaft, though, which had some mineshaft chests that contained glowberries and pumpkin and melon seeds. I decided to touch grass, something I rarely do in real life. Clearly the sunlight was too much though, as I quickly went underground again, this time to new undiscovered deep depths of the world, searching for diamonds. I found four diamonds really quickly, but wanted five. Three for a pickaxe, and two for an enchantment table. It took a literal real life hour to find any more diamonds, but eventually I got what I needed and headed out of the mine. Even though this is a temporary base, I decided it would be worth sticking around for a while to be able to harvest crops, get mending, and use villagers. Therefore, I started to expand the base, but quickly ran out of wood, so went and chopped down some trees. The next day, I gathered sand for glass, whilst avoiding an angry drowned of a trident. I then continued to work on the foundation and walls for the base. On day 19, it was time to construct the roof and fill in the glass pane windows. I tried to keep the original vibe of a default Minecraft villager house so that it wouldn't stand out from the surroundings. After sleeping, I dug out and filled in the floors for the new rooms. The furnace room will have an auto smelter once I get more iron. The chest room was deliberately made one block lower, so that it would have more room to fit chests in. Day 21 began with creating a carpet to make the base feel more like a home. The rest of the day was spent replenishing the resources that the base extension took, as well as harvesting and growing the sugarcane farm. The mission for the next few days was to gather obsidian. I bravely entered the cave, although regretted it instantly after being swarmed with mobs, but eventually made it a lava lake level. I then realized I made a terrible mistake. I forgot to bring diamonds or a diamond pick. It's not like I've been playing this game for over a decade or anything, but then a diamond was spotted. My emotions were so high that it was only one. I gave up and started to head back up to the surface. But on my way, the Minecraft gods must have heard me and gave me enough diamonds for a pickaxe. I carefully mined obsidian, enough for a portal and an enchantment table. On day 25, I built another portal in the old blacksmith. I did it there in case any mobs came through as then they wouldn't bother me in my house. At the other side was a crimson forest, but the never was scary, so I decided to tackle this at a later date once properly prepared. On day 26, I went exploring to look for a more permanent base location. However, I wanted to head back before getting lost. On day 27, I was lost. Guess there goes my career aspirations to be a sat-nav. After what felt like a year, I made it back home safely on day 28, and then constructed an auto smelter to make smelting 
wanting more effortless. On day 29 and 30, I built a room for the enchantment table to go. And on day 31, I made the enchantment table and the only bookshelves I could afford. On day 32, I made a pen for cows to be able to farm leather. I then searched for cows to put into the pen, but found none. The next day, I finally got cows into the pen by leading them with wheat. Then spent the evening lighting up the surrounding area to stop mobs from spawning. Day 34 was quite a chill day, farming. I entered the nether and searched for a fortress. Found a blaze spawner and killed blazes to get blaze rods. I struggled and kept dying in lava. Luckily, I had a backup, so I loaded it up, went into peaceful, went to the blaze spawner and made a box so that the blazes would stop knocking me off into lava. You might call this cheating and I'd 100% agree, but I lost all my stuff and this was never a hardcore world. The only other option would have been to quit or repeatedly do the same thing over and over, making a boring video for you. On day 36, I explored the fortress, found a saddle, horse armor, and my first armor trim, grabbed some nether wart, and implanted it at my base. On day 37 and 38, I found a mob spawner and made a skeleton XP farm, mined out the room and placed water so the mobs would flow, made the collection area, and then tested if the farm worked. I've got a tutorial for this farm on the channel if you need it. I then made a ladder back to the surface. On day 39, I decorated and built the mob spawner entrance, and on day 40, I did the roof. From days 41 to 47, the main objective was to gather leather. Whilst waiting to be able to breed the cows more, I harvested crops, gathered wood, and extended farms, as well as organizing some chests, which won't last long as I'm too lazy to keep them tidy. Day 48 was leather collection day. I made the bookshelves and upgraded the enchantment table, then enchanted two pickaxes, one with fortune 3 and one with silk touch, and then went to the mob spawner and collected XP. On day 49, I enchanted a sword, but sadly only got knockback. I then prepared to go caving. From day 50 to 52, I went on a mega mining trip. Got diamonds, gold, lapis, and tons of iron. But ran out of torches, so headed back slightly quicker than expected. On day 53, I mined all the ores with fortune that I got from the mining trip. In this chest is everything I obtained. The next day I harvested crops and then got back to level 30. On day 55 I made a grindstone and re-enchanted the sword. Got only sharpness, still not what I wanted. Spent day 56 re-rolling a librarian to try and get mending. And on day 57 I finally got it, but it was too expensive, so started to grind for emeralds. I made a new set of iron armor and gave it low level enchantments, then went mining to hopefully find some diamonds. As one of my goals for this challenge was to make full diamond armor. I found plenty of ores, including some diamonds. On day 62, I made the sugarcane farm way bigger to get paper and therefore emeralds a lot easier. You know the saying third time's a charm? Well, not in this case, as I still didn't get a good sword enchantment. I made an anvil and repaired my pick. On day 64, I enchanted my sword again and finally got looting. Perfect for collecting enderpearls. Day 65, I went bartering with piglins with the hope to get some enderpearls, but I was not expecting to get nine. I guess I don't need to use that looting sword as much as I Fought. On day 66 and 67, I went to a warped forest, killed Enderman, and got Enderpearls. The next chunk of days were pretty mundane, gathering XP and growing sugarcane. The highlight of these days was getting my first mending book, but the rest were pretty boring. Though through the power of editing, bish bash bosh, here's my full set of enchanted diamond armor and tools. The enchants aren't the best, but I got Feather Falling, which is the main one I wanted for the Ender Dragon fight. On day 81, I put mending on my pickaxe, crafted Eyes of Ender, and headed towards the stronghold. If you don't already know, I have low vision, none in my right eye and only some in my left eye. Therefore, I struggled to follow the eyes of Ender, so instead loaded up a copy of the world, enabled cheats, typed slash locate structure stronghold, and then went back to the original world and found those coordinates. This was a lot easier because otherwise I would have had to use a ton of eyes of Enders more than I had and I still might not have even found the stronghold. On day 82, I continued towards the stronghold, had to be careful not to drown though as there was no land in sight. Safely dug down and found the stronghold. Stronghold. On day 83, I explored the stronghold, found a library and the portal room, and filled in the end portal. At the start of day 84, I jumped into the portal. It was time to fight the dragon. I took a lot of full damage when trying to climb the towers and failing to water bucket clutch, but managed to destroy all the end crystals. I angered a lot of endermen, so I had to keep hiding, healing, and attacking them. Eventually, I waited for the dragon to begin perching on the exit portal and attacked it. 
whilst avoiding the purple poison until I beat the game. This is only my third time ever doing this, I think, in legit survival. I watched the dragon death animation and collected the experience. The next day, I collected the dragon egg and mined obsidian, then went through the end gateway to the end city. On day 86, I explored the end city. This was the first time I'd ever done this in any difficulty aside from peaceful, so it was stressful. I managed to get eight shulker shells. There were many near-death experiences with the levitation, but I just kept poling down. I also got an elytra and then headed back through the end gateway and exited the end, back to the overworld. Once I got back to the base, I realized I had no shulker shells. I must have put them in the chest rather than ender chest in the end city. Oh well, I guess if you guys want a 200 days, it can be a mission to retrieve my missing shulker shells. I made two ender chests using the remaining eyes of ender and the obsidian I mined from the end island, then built an enchantment table for the XP area. On day 88, I put the second ender chest in the skeleton farm and decorated the collection room, as well as built the enchantment table. On the 89th day, I put a grindstone in the XP farm, then re enchanted my chest plate and realized my armor was running low, so used my remaining diamonds to repair it. I decided to display my old enchanted iron armor on an armor stand, then made some barrels for different crops and seeds near the farms, and finished off day 90 by terraforming some land and building a sheep pen. On day 91, I got sheep into the pen. If you're wondering why I'm making a sheep farm, it's the same reason I'm gathering this wood. On days 92 to 95, I built four new villager houses, some to match existing styles and some unique designs. I also made a villager planter for crops and food. The next day, I did the doors, windows, and beds. This is what I needed the wall for. I continued doing this the next day, then built a monument to complete that has a bunch of items I'd like to fill in one day, if we do 200 days. On day 98, I filled in the monument. However, I would like to change the blocks one day as not overly keen. Maybe some shroom lights, frog lights, or sea lanterns? I then collected amethyst whilst trying to avoid destroying the budding amethyst blocks so the amethyst would regrow, and then placed the blocks around the enchantment table. Day 99 was spent trying to prepare for celebrating day 100 by making a cake. However, I had no egg, so went searching for a chicken. I did find one, but accidentally killed it before it laid an egg. Guess there's no cake for me. We made it to day 100, but that doesn't mean the grind stopped. I tamed a horse, gave it my gold horse armor, and a saddle, and then reflected on everything we've accomplished and built. Wheat, carrot, melon, and sugarcane farms, pigs, sheep, and cow pens, an XP farm, killing the ender dragon, and of course, the base. The main area, the enchantment table, auto smelter, and chest room. Before the day comes to a close, I got something to ask you. What should I name the horse? Comment suggestions below.